You get three rolls on the tower, and whatever random question you roll, that is where we oh, start. God. You get an A plus already. The amount of I, people who don't know how to well, use a dice tower. It's a dice tower, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. There's so many people who just drop it here. Oh yeah, no, uh, um, one. One's good. New skill. If you could learn a new skill or about a different profession through a role, what would you pick and why? Oh my God, there's so many. Um, uh, pro- I mean, I don't know how much I'd learn, but like my dream always was to become a paramedic. Like Ooh. that was like what I wanted to do. And I think that'd be so cool to like have that experience and like with the ambulance and stuff, even though I think maybe I'm not so good with blood. It might be oh. tough, but you know, hoping for the best. With yes. your filmography, yes. <laughs> you're not good with blood. I know you would, you would guess that, but uh, you know, corn syrup's a little, feels a little different. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. I uh, I feel like that's a really good answer, though. Yeah, I would. It's yeah. Then again, when I think um, any time I've spoken to an actor who's been on like ER, yeah. I'll always ask something yeah. along the lines of how much of that knowledge actually pertains mm-hmm. to the real world, yeah. where you could help yourself if you were in one of those situations. And what and do they say? <laughs> like, nothing. 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 Cool. Nothing. Okay. Well. <laughs> Hoping for the best. I'll still, I'll still believe you on screen as yeah. a paramedic. All right, second roll in the yeah. tower. Number eight. Oh, I'm happy I get to ask you this one. It's horror franchise, uh, so obviously you are horror. You are a yes. horror icon already. If you could join the existing horror franchise of your choice, what franchise would you choose and why? Nightmare on Elm Street. Definitely. Yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street. I mean, that's like I saw that at probably too young of an age and I think because the movie is about when you fall asleep um am I allowed to swear shit hits, yeah go for shit it hits the fan <laughs> um it's like I, I didn't want to sleep and that's like the most terrifying thing in the world so um and I like I just I, I obsessed so I would love to be a part Smart pick. I have so many yeah. thoughts. The last yeah. the last time I asked Samara Weaving this question, Ugh. she said the same thing, and now no I'm way. like, I need the two of you yeah, in a Nightmare on Elm Street movie let's together. Let's go. We've got to get this out there. We've got to start pitching this. This is the manifestation <laughs> yes. table. Uh, we do that here. Yes, yes, clearly. <laughs> the other thing yeah. is, every single time I've ever, ever asked somebody, which um, like which horror slasher yeah. would you most want to fight, and anyone ever says Freddy, I'm like, what's... That's, you You can't stay awake forever. No, you no, just no. can't. You just, that's not... I would never pick him. You can't can't outrun no. like Ghostface or mm. Leatherface, mm-hmm. but at least there's like the teeniest, tiniest chance of like running and hiding. Yeah. Versus Freddy will get you. Uh, he'll, no, <laughs> no, no, no chance. You got no chance. This is what I lay awake yeah. thinking about at night. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Last roll in the tower. Okay. <laughs> Number four. Here's a good meaty one. This is high low. Can you give me one audition high and one audition low you've experienced and what you learned from the low that you would apply to future auditions? Oh, God, there's been so many lows, lows. Um, <laughs> uh, probably the one that just like pops into my head. When I was younger, I, st- I you know I started auditioning around like 13, 14. So a lot of the auditions were um, for like Disney Channel and Nickelodeon. And probably what you've seen through my career is that's not really, it's <laughs> not really my vibe. <laughs> um, I'm not very good at like the kind of like cheesy over like it just wasn't my thing but I kept being sent on these auditions and there was like one had to have been something for like Nickelodeon TV show where I had to like have a Swedish accent like dance at the same time and I just remember going in being like oh my god oh my god this is so bad and then doing it and just like seeing all their faces just like what is happening and it was yep walked out of there and was just like okay I'm just gonna try and block that out of my mind. I love me a low, though, that so clearly oh, yeah. highlights the path you were meant to pursue. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> right? Whew. Um, and a high, I mean, to go back to Ramin, I think I remember, so I was, I was living in the Dominican Republic at the time doing kiteboarding, and I had sent in my tape, I love the script, I sent in an audition tape, and then he was like, yes, we want to, you know, I was one of the six girls. Flew back to LA, and I was so nervous, and like, I got into this room with him, and it was just like, magic. Like, the way that he works with actors, I was like, terrified. I mean, I never like, this was a big deal for me. And, yeah, I think, 
because we're kind of, you know, it was his first big movie and my, and we're just kind of, there was this, I don't know, connection. And I just walked out of that being like, even if, you know, nothing had like, I don't know. I felt like I met like such a special person. Huh, I love yeah, that. I have yeah. to follow up. Even yeah. after all the directors you've worked with since, is there anything that is still one of a kind in terms of how Ramin works with uh, their, his actors that others don't? Oh, man. I mean, he's just so... Um, not every director knows how to talk to an actor and like, you know, come over and he, he's very, you know, he, it's not like talking out loud. He kind of pulls you to the side and like maybe says like a little anecdote or thought or something that kind of plants a seed in your head to like try something. It's not like, you know, can you try it slower? Can you try it, you know, be angrier? It's like saying something to kind of trigger a, an emotion or a something which I think is super unique in a director. What's up, everyone? Welcome back for a new edition of Collider Ladies Night with someone that I'm shocked took me this long to get on the show because we've been talking since 2013, Micah Monroe, the star of Long Legs, which is excellent. Thank you. I was watching our first conversation ever. Oh, no. <laughs> you. I mean, in all honesty, oh, no. you, you were like, on point for oh. someone so young you were so eloquent and thoughtful it's nice to hear i was like the dope behind the camera <laughs> asking all my little film schooly questions because i was in film school and yeah. you could hear it in every that question i asked amazing i i think i'm gonna have to go back and watch this <laughs> please <Yeah>. don't <laughs> <laughs> now that i brought it up yeah. everyone's gonna go and yeah, look and at this but look this up yeah it was a cool conversation oh, that's at nice. any price because yeah, ramin at that, that was time, my first ever like first ever and movie. working with Mar- with uh, Ramin Barani, yeah, my yeah. God, he was my professor then. I know, I remember you <laughs> saying so that. Weird. So crazy. He's probably yeah. one of one of like the main reasons that I feel like I've developed the appreciation for film yeah. that I did. Well, I mean, same with me though. I mean, it was my first experience on a set, and he just like, yeah, it, it was the best ever. So I think that's why I'm still doing it today. What is the movie you saw, the performance you saw, personal experience you had, whatever it may be, that first made you say to yourself, I have to be an actor? Yeah. Oh. Oh, man. So many. I I probably have to go with um, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. There's a scene with Jack Nicholson where it's just, like, really tight on his face. And I don't think he has, like, a ton of dialogue. But you're just, like, seeing all these emotions. And he's portraying all... You just see in his eyes. And I remember being like what the fuck is going on? This is insane. This is uh, something in that moment for whatever reason sort of clicked. Um, Yeah. I love that example. Like there's, there's nothing also that delights me more in a performance than when an actor is able to make like the, the internal so external. And I feel like his work in that is just shining example. Yes, it is. How old were you when you watched that? Oh man, I was young. I I also, my dad would show me, my dad, I I, I mean, I have to thank him because like he showed me so many movies from a pretty young age. I feel like I was like, What's, like, the normal age to watch? I feel like, but, like, younger than that, like 11, 12, maybe 11. Every years. single time a friend asks me if a movie is appropriate for their I child, know. the um, first thing I tell them is, do no. not listen to what I'm about yeah. to tell you. No. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I was definitely, yeah, it's probably, like, right before I started acting. Because mm. so, it's still a strong memory in my head, so maybe 12. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's an intense <laughs> in my book, yeah. for what it's worth, yeah. that sounds very appropriate. Yeah, yeah, right? That seems fine. There's a fine. photo of my infant niece on my lap while I watch Final Destination, and it's one of the photos that I cherish. She was, yeah. like, too young to compute <laughs> yeah, what was on like, the it's TV. Fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's totally fine. fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you already brought up kiteboarding, yeah. and I am curious about that phase of your career, because yeah. I know there was a point where I think you were doing school kiteboarding and auditioning. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, was there a point where you kind of had to like make a clean break or make a firm decision between one path or the other? Yes, yes. I think um, it was probably I had a really terrible accident kiteboarding. Oh, God. Um, cracked my head open. <laughs> I'm fine. All is, all, is, all is well. But it was um, when you do any sport, and at that time I was doing it professionally, um, you need to give it your all. You need to give it 100%. And at that time, I couldn't. And it, yeah, it was just this sort of like wake up call where it's like, okay, you got to make a decision. You, you you can't be getting pulled in both these different directions. Um, and I just, yeah, acting was like this like visceral feel. Like it was just like there, there wasn't really 
at that moment, like a debate, like, oh, what should I? It was just like, this is what I need to follow. And here we are. Nothing better (laughs) than being in a position where you have to choose between two things that you're really good at, but then having like that clear understanding that yeah. like this is what yeah. speaks to my soul yep. more than anything. Yep. yep. Yeah. It was a very interesting time in my life for sure. So you make the decision to pursue acting full force. When you do that at the time, what did you think was step one to becoming the actor you wanted to be in this industry? And ultimately, is that a step you would recommend to other aspiring actors or did something else catch you by surprise along the way? Oh, man. I mean, I... You know, I had done at that point the movie with Ramin, and he was just like, I think you got to, like, go for this. And so I was like, okay, <laughs> and move moved to L.A. You know, that was the first step. Um, the thing with acting is a lot is not in my control. Mm-hmm. So when people ask for advice, I mean, I think you have to be incredibly driven, incredibly tough, be able to take a lot, a lot of no's before you get a yes and be mentally prepared for that. And I think kiteboarding helped me a lot with this sort of toughness. And... Yeah, it, it's it's a very interesting career because, you know, comparing the, the kiteboarding side or a sport, you know, I was in control. I could, uh, that was easy. I can train, I can get better acting, you know, I can work on my lines so many times, work with a coach, go to acting classes. And at a certain point, it's either written in the stars or not. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's every stage of the process yeah. in this industry, too. I think about it all the time just because, like, a show I love just got canceled, and I want to see the actors continue to celebrate it, but I know, like, I know it hurts, but at the same time, I would never want someone to completely devalue that season that they made just because a network decided it had at to the stop. A hundred percent. Same thing at the box office. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. You think also, you think, oh, this is going to be massive, this is going to be a huge success, and it isn't, and the thing that you just never it's just it's so there's no algorithm there's no you know mathematical equation to to equal success or equal yeah so well yes the mathematical (laughs) the mathematical equation to success should be like if if you are proud of your work and it touched i don't care if it touched like billions of dollars at the box office worth of people even if it touched like one damn person person. that movie meant something to one person high value right there yes so (laughs) at any price might be the answer to this question but when you were first starting out which movie would you credit with putting into focus what you wanted most for yourself going forward in terms of the stories you would tell and the onset environments you'd want to be a part of i mean yeah at any price but i would say also probably it follows <laughs> yeah i that was a a real big turning point just in my career and in my life and that experience on that set it's like i saw i don't know this like magic being made in this way that I can't really explain, but I think it has a lot to do with David, the director, and his vision, and but just like being a part of that and feeling that and yeah, being in it was it was magic for sure. I can definitely see that. Yeah. So in general, I do love yeah. asking people about what it's like having the breakout moment in Hollywood. Yeah. Would you credit It Follows with I that? I have to. Yeah. yeah. I get yeah. it. I get yeah. it. I mean, and none of us expected it. Oh, my God. That's We're like, like one of the most special <laughs> things I in the world. I had no idea. I was like, no one. What? This is the craziest story ever. Why would anyone be? And it's just it just like. Yeah, that was, was one of my first poster quotes ever. Yes. Same for one of my best friends still to this no day. Way. And he had a family member print us both the poster like gigantic and is still still in my apartment. Oh. Cherish it. Well, be excited for the uh, <laughs> the sequel. Hopefully they do a oh, cool poster. We're, we're, we're going to get, get there. there. Yeah. We're going to get there. Sorry, I, right. yeah. There, there was no way, way. Yeah. I was letting that go. But I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll play respectfully yeah. yes. until yes. the right time. Of course, um, of course. Back to breaking out in this industry. Yeah. I love yeah. asking this yeah. question because when someone breaks out in Hollywood, it could be different from like 
what we see and feel from our perspective compared yeah. to the person actually experiencing the breakout. Yeah. So can you name one misconception about breaking out in Hollywood, but also something that truly did change for the better when it follows caught on that way? I mean, I, th- I feel like people think like, oh, your life completely changes and it's all and it, d- it doesn't at all. I mean, like maybe a few more people would like come up and be like, oh, are you from that thing? Which is weird and kind of, yeah, uh, it's like, what the heck? Um But it doesn't, I mean, nothing really, you know, changes. It's all the same. Um, And I think something that really, I mean, it, it, you know, it opens so many opportunities. It, it, I mean, it was night and day. I feel like it's so weird because, like, you make these things on a set. Like, it feels like you make it in a bubble. Yep. And that it doesn't exist beyond the bubble, but then all of a sudden it does. Yeah, you get you're all like, this recognition Whoa. when it happens. <laughs> like, okay, now we're out here in the world. So yeah. with that movie, it comes mm-hmm. out, it kind of opens the doors to lots of possibilities. More often than not, I feel like in this industry, what winds up happening is someone hits it big with like maybe a smaller independent project, and then all of a sudden all the studios come on in with their big budget projects. Yes, indeed. You took Independence Day Resurgence mm-hmm. and The Fifth Wave. Mm-hmm. Can you kind of walk me through what the thinking was like after it follows in terms of figuring out which of those types of projects oh, would yeah. best suit how you wanted to present yourself to the industry? Totally. I mean, but so I was filming It Follows. And I auditioned, I sent in a tape for a movie called The Guest. I filmed those two back to back almost and then got out of that and was, I mean, again, didn't think anything would happen with those two. And those two movies just like, those are like iconic. (laughs) Well, thank you. I I appreciate it. I mean it. it. (laughs) I know. I see you go like, oh, yeah. I'm like, yes. Um... But I mean, it's it's like you you know you're on these small movies, tiny budgets, and then all of a sudden they're like, we're going to offer you this amount of money to be on this, and you're like, oh okay, yeah, that sounds um, fun and exciting, and it was just like a completely different experience that I was like, so I felt like I was so green to that world too, because it was just like a whole different speed and the way that things were made and like. Yeah, I was just like, oh, my God, what's happening? Um, but still, in the end, it's like, you know, there's there's so much of that world that's so fun being on these, like, huge sets and, like, I don't know. It was, it was wild. It was, like, this kind of huge change for me. So there were those two movies. Yes. I feel like you have focused more on the, the independent yes. fair mm-hmm. ever since. Mm-hmm. What did you learn from those two movies in terms of the reality of making a big studio blockbuster that has informed the choices you've made since? Um, There can be, I feel like the, what I love about indie movies is that everyone is on that set because they believe in the script, they believe in the director, they they are there not because they're making money, but they're there because they want to be in a part of this thing. And that isn't the same feeling you have on a big movie. It's just a different feeling. And, and there's nothing better than, than, than there's like an intimacy on, on the smaller films that just like bring life to me and make me continue to love this job that I do. I love that. Yeah. I'm yeah. also like you you can correct me if yeah. I'm wrong and it's not your experience, yeah. but I am a very big believer that the best horror filmmakers are actually the biggest teddy bears in the world 100%. and oftentimes those sets have the warmest environments where you would think the exact opposite given what's on screen. No question. Totally agree. Yes. Oh, yeah. I love Which that. is the best. Yeah. Before I veer too hard down yes. the horror <laughs> path and into long legs. Yes. A couple of broader questions. Yeah. This is a really big question, okay. but I love the fact that there's so many different acting processes out there, and all yep. all are right, all totally. are right. There's totally. many different paths you could pursue, and that's mm-hmm. super cool. Indeed. Of all the actors you've worked with, can you tell me whose process is most similar to yours, where the second you met this person, you were just immediately in sync? But then I also want the opposite, someone with a completely different <laughs> mm-hmm. approach, and maybe it challenged you to adapt and try something new. Oh, I mean, I worked with... Um, I mean, there's so many actors that I've worked with that are, like, similar to me, I guess. 
more few that, yeah, uh, I don't know. Nick Robinson was someone that I worked with who's like, I feel like we have kind of the same outlook on the job and we worked really well together and he's become like a very good friend. So I feel like, and I think he's incredible. Um, and then probably opposite. I mean, I could go with, I could go with Cage. <laughs> we could go with Cage if we wanted to. His process to. <laughs> fascinates me. Fascinates um, me. I mean, it was just totally different and maybe we'll, as we continue, you'll learn more. But um, yeah, I mean, he was just in full method, I think, especially for for the role he's playing in this, um, kind of needed to be. So, yeah. I could see that. (laughs) I've spoken to a lot of people who who have worked with him in the past, and one of the things that always excites me about his approach to the work the most is it doesn't seem like he is, like, like one process and one process always. Yep. He pulls from like a million I, different yes, things. Yes, I could see that very much so. Also because he does such vastly different mm-hmm. projects and roles. And so I'm sure that he like, yeah, adapts. In the last couple of years alone, like when I oh, rack my, my brain God. for the titles he's been in, I'm like, all it's, of them are extremely different. It, I mean, <laughs> just like polar opposites, which is... I think very cool. It is so cool. Yeah. It's kind of like narrow that down to your own process. Yeah. Can you tell me something you've been doing when approaching your work that has stayed the same since day one, but then also tell me something that has emerged that's different, fresh, something you've tried more recently? Um, uh, music has always uh, been crucial for me, just because on set, you know, there's so many people and talking and craziness and like... For me, I, I need, like, you, it's the easiest way for me to sort of zone out and be transported to a uh, different place emotionally, mentally. Um, and that's always stayed the same. I think depending on, you know, sort of with different roles, I can, I'll can change certain things, whether I, like, work with a coach on it or kind of wanted to go into it with like not being super prepared and have it be more like rough around the edges I guess and that's something I've kind of like learned throughout the years what roles kind of need to be prepared and which are will be better just like kind of going with the flow. Ooh, I love yeah. talking about acting coaches because yeah. I feel like we don't talk about that nearly yeah. enough. Yeah. Can you tell me something about your acting coach? Oh, I'll in- talk about her oh, all day. Please do. She's like, the I'll best. hear everything um, specifically, but I'll open it yeah. up to literally anything you want to tell me about her. What is something about the way that like she teaches and gives notes that you think aligns well with how you like to receive them? Um, well, I met her. Can you say her name? Yeah, okay. De- Deb Dion. <laughs> okay, Deb Dion. Yeah, sure you're like, oh, credit. she's gonna be like, <laughs> <laughs> no, she's the best. Um, I met her. Um, she's also a casting director, but I met her um, when I was 13. She was like doing like an intensive, like a like. And my my manager at the time was like, you you should go take this class. Like it's really good. And I went, and we just like hit it off. So I've known her since. I was 13 with braces, um, and for me, the way that I work and what what I like to do is, like, as much as I can, relate the character to my own life and be able to pull things from my my past, my present, and kind of whether we have to sort of mold it, but, but bring that in so it's a really sort of real, raw emotion. And because she's been with me for so long, she knows so much of my life and what I've gone through. And she's like been there for everything, like me becoming an adult, literally. And so we're we just are so connected and she's able to like tap into places where I'm not like, you know, we're doing a scene. She's like, but why don't if you think about this it could be interesting to look at it that way. And she, yeah, she just knows me so well. So it like, ah, oh, she's the best. That love makes her. me so happy. Yeah. I also yeah. just love hearing when people have others in their corner yeah. from the beginning yeah. where oh, you could just yeah. like pinpoint yeah. this. This person is someone who yeah. like, I'm trying to think of a good way to explain it. Like won't just like do their job to get it done, but will do it in a way yeah. that serves my goals, yeah. which I feel yeah. like as an actor in this industry is especially important. I have no question about mm. that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, before I'm, I'll ask yes. one more question okay. before I veer into <laughs> horror like, specifically. Uh-oh. I have a yeah. lot of horror questions yeah. for you. Surprise, yeah. surprise. <laughs> um, I've gotten in the habit of asking this a yeah. lot lately because I do think it's really important in this industry mm-hmm. where there's a lot of pressure. Can you recall the first time you felt the power of your own voice on a set where you spoke up, your voice was heard, and something changed for the better? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, I think I'm trying to think like probably five, five ish years ago is probably when I like started like being like, oh, I, I can, you know, if, if something isn't right or bothering me, like, oh, I can actually say something and something will be done. But prior to that, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's scary and, and you don't know like what you're able to say and you're worried about your job and certain things. And, and now, I mean, yeah, I'm super lucky that it's like, yeah, I don't put up with any shit. I like so, hearing yeah. that. Did that spark an interest in producing more? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Had a sure. feeling. I had for a feeling. Sure. I think it does with a lot of people. Yeah. But I think it's just like, oh, I want to be in control. And yeah, for sure. What is a specific goal you have for yourself as a producer? How would you like to influence the sets you're producing on in a way where it'll give other actors something you wish you had more of in the past? Oh, I mean, uh, to me, it's so important. The, the people you choose to, to be on your set, for everyone to be on the same wavelength, same energy, and, like, uh, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's so many, I mean, everyone's crucial on that set, you know? Everyone's important, and if you have one, you know, loose screw, if you will, or just, um, it can ruin the experience uh, for anyone on that set, and... I yeah I I've, it's very clear the sets that have worked and the sets that haven't and why I guess yeah the on set environment is so incredibly like you all give a significant like we experience a movie for like ninety minutes two and a half hours whatever mm-hmm. you give such a big part of your life to each film oh, yeah. you make it is of the utmost yeah. importance that it's like a healthy fulfilling environment indeed <laughs> indeed it is always <laughs> um, I guess that kind of takes me into this first horror yes. question I have for Perfect. you because. I love so many of your movies. You've worked with so many like epic horror directors who I deeply admire. I'll split this up and not okay. combine it into a two-part question. First, of all of the directing greats in the horror genre, do you think that they have a, a shared trait, something that signals to you like, yes, this person will be added to that list? I don't know. That's a very good question. I, I, I don't know. I guess like kind of a crazy like fucked up mind that can kind of go to a a really like if you're willing to go to that place you kind of have to be willing to go there so but I don't know uh, exteriorly if I'd be able to tell I guess I don't know it's a secret sauce yeah (laughs) there's something there's gotta be something there because whoo yeah what is something about Oz that's one of a kind he's got a one of a kind mind for sure certainly (laughs) does doesn't he um he is so funny he's got the best sense of humor like I uh, like he would just always be making all of us laugh and I think that that was like a really kind of different and much needed energy for this set in particular um it definitely got like more serious when Cage was around he was like okay everyone act, act cool let's all be cool um but no, he's just like uh, such a joy to work with. Yeah. That makes me so happy. Yeah, it yeah. Kind of, that kind of leans into this yeah. other question that yeah. I love asking folks who work largely in the horror genre. Can you tell me something you do on those sets to prioritize self-care? Oh. Like where you could you could go there, yes. but know <laughs> that you could come out the other side, okay? Yeah. Yo, oh, gosh. Um, yeah, I've learned the hard way. <laughs> Um, no, I, um, a couple things, uh, usually uh, something that I, I've, um, uh, learned just n- not even just specifically in the genre, but what I've learned having done so many movies and going to so many sets and being in this new city, I try and bring a friend with me now. So I, I, yeah, my That's friend actually that I bring idea. is out there somewhere. Um, but I like, it's. 
it's like helped so much just to be able to like, you know, I go and do the work, but then being able to like come back to like this friend that like knows you kind of, yeah, it's just there to like chill and catch up and go get a glass of wine and, you know, watch uh, some reality TV. Oh, that's the so best it's, idea it's, ever. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's like sa- sa- saved me, saved me for sure. I get that so yeah. much. Yeah. I yeah. feel like whenever I go to like an event where I'm like super stressed about like, I don't know, moderating mm-hmm. a Q&A, mm-hmm. I like when I bring a friend yeah, because the the, best. they'll talk to me yeah. before yeah. so I don't get in my own head about the pressure exactly. to come. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah, that. It's, That's a good it's, idea. Yeah. So long legs in particular now. Oh, there's so many questions about this yeah, movie. Like, For anybody out there, I swear we're not going to spoil anything. Yeah. You are safe here. Yeah. <laughs> we might have to circle back I after know, the release, though, because like, we've got a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, first, signing on. Surprise, surprise. Big yes. compound question for you. Yeah. When you first took Long Legs, what part of making the movie were you most looking forward to? But then can you also tell me something that wound up being more creatively fulfilling to do in the movie than you ever could have imagined at the start? Indeed. Um, well, I... Uh, am obsessed with crime thriller movie. I love, I love them. Um, and when I read the script, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be in like an FBI outfit on a crime scene. And I was just like, for the first time in a long time, like so excited for like the sets and the wardrobe. And like, I, I was so excited. Like it was like a dream role. I grew up, you know, Silence of the Lambs, Jodie fought like I just and I was like, oh, my God, my dream is coming true. So it's, that was it's got those vibes, it too. It does. Mm. It does. Um, and the unexpected certainly was. Um, so Nick and I, we didn't. Um, the director didn't want us to meet prior. Um, I didn't see any photo. You know, they've done like makeup tests this and that like I didn't see anything saw nothing um and they brought me to the door to the set for the scene but I don't want to give too much away (laughs) uh and um I was like breathing really heavy my heart was pounding and uh the director called action I opened the door and that was the first time Yeah. So that was the first time I've ever experienced anything like that, where it was just like and they had the cameras rolling. They were all on me. And like my reaction in that it that is real. It's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. I can't wait to rewatch it. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) You're going to be like, get to. Yeah. Um, And that I've never done anything like that, where it's just very raw like uh, it was crazy oh i love that yeah. mm-hmm. i love that so yep, much yep, i can't yep. I, really, I can't wait to watch that <laughs> yep, one yep, and the yep. whole and the whole movie because yep. again i need to i need to rewatch yep, the movie yep. knowing mm-hmm. the ending so i can yep. piece together all, all the little the nuances leading mm-hmm. up to it so i have a question about finding your character i've gotten a little obsessed with this idea is, um like a ladies night like a month ago somebody somebody told me that one of the greatest thrills as an actor is stepping onto a new project and feeling like you're on unstable ground with a character, but then having that scene where, like, you know with certainty you have found them. Oh, Did you have that scene with Lee? percent I love that, because I think that's so... I remember it follows the exact scene where I was like, oh, I get this character. Scene. The scene, it's so small. I come in from the swimming pool, and um, Olivia, the actress, is on the seashell phone, and I think I come in and I, like, squeeze my hair over my the girl Lily who plays my sister and I like squeeze my hair and they're like laughing about something and I just like felt like all the time I was like oh I get like I'm kind of this like a little bit awkward a little I don't know why it just like clicked I in that moment it, though. yeah like those are the little things yeah. that I feel like oftentimes viewers don't yeah. think about yeah. someone also told me like one of the most important things is thinking about those seemingly meaningless things yeah. about a character like is my character the type of person who yeah. runs late to stuff yeah. <laughs> and now I think yeah. about that all the time yeah. with everybody yeah no I love that I think I think it's so cool finding, yeah, all those little things that add so many layers to your character. Um, and on, uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it was one of actually the first two days we, we f- what can I say? Um, I think it's fine. Yeah, I, I um, it's like kind of the first 
you know, uh, we're, we're searching for serial killer, me and my partner, and we're kind of thrown into this crazy situation, um, opening of the movie somewhat. And, uh, and yeah, there was just kind of these, like, moments of, di- like, where I wasn't really saying anything, and, and my partner's, like, kind of talking, and I was kind of like, oh, there's, like, very, like, she's very uncomfortable in communicating with others. There's, like, a, a, an awkwardness, and she's not maybe so good in social situations, and it was, I was so great that we started sort of at the beginning, and, like, from that point, I was, like, really sort of brought in this, like, yeah, new sort of depth to her, perhaps. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I have a follow yeah. up to that because yeah. I also get a little obsessed with character backstory. Yeah. And <laughs> I love when I hear about things yeah. that like we don't necessarily see or hear about yeah. in a film, but we can feel informing yeah. someone's performance. So yeah. did you come up with anything for Lee's? I know we, we do. We get yeah, I know. I was like, <laughs> eventually, but like something that you came up with on your own, you held tight to and we could see it informing how like she carries herself. I Yeah, I want to be. There's something very specific I yeah. clocked at the beginning. Yeah. She follows someone into a house mm-hmm. with such authority yes, yeah, and yeah. without skipping a beat. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I need to know everything about how you got to this point. Yeah. Yeah. I think that there's like this unknowing strength that she has and this intuition that's like built into her because of her, yeah, her childhood and so many things that kind of lead her to this particular moment, right? That's all fine. I'll take that, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You're you're safe. I think I'm safe. I think I'm safe. It's Uh, incredible how, like, I'm I'm like, where do I draw the lines with spoilers? I know, it's like, I don't... The first act has a huge spoiler (laughs) in it that we can't quite say. Yeah, Yeah. This might be a tough question to answer because of that. Uh When, When you first sign on for this movie, what would you say is the biggest burning question you had for Oz in terms of her arc and what she gets herself into? Mm. <laughs> I'm like, I don't just sit up at For that. what it's worth, yeah. if you say anything and ultimately yeah. we decide it crosses the spoiler line, we will protect it. Yeah, and it'll be... Save it for later. Ble- bleeped out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I think the, the, the most important is um, her relationship with her mother. I feel like that's, like, really... Um, with anyone, it's very informative, your childhood. And um, and so I think that that was like a really important thing to understand and what like things to sort of bring in or kind of wait till the end for her to discover things. Because, I mean, with trauma, you suppress a lot. And so I think it was important to like kind of know when to bring certain things forward and when to suppress, I guess. Mm-hmm. No, that's a, that's a good yeah. Spoiler free answer. Yeah. <laughs> I do have to bring up Alicia's work because I, I feel like a lot of people rightfully are seeing your name and Nick Cage's yeah. name. And you're both phenomenal in the film. I don't think anyone's prepared for what a scene stealer she is in this. She is incredible. Like it is it is such a unique and uniquely challenging role. And she just does it with the I mean, it's just she is incredible and it was so amazing to work opposite her and what she brings i mean yeah she i was absolutely blown away working with her but then seeing the movie i was like oh my god and she just it's just the whole it like truly took my breath away i was very impressed can you tell me something about her as a scene partner that you appreciated and maybe even helped you reach something in lee that you wouldn't have been able to without her oh um i didn't really i mean we didn't really know what she was going to bring and sort of immediately brought this sort of quirkiness. And I could definitely see why Lee is the way that she is being raised by a mother like that. And I think it was just like so informative to see what she was doing as a as the performance of this character and how to kind of like bring that even more into like childhood traumas and things and like bring that. Yeah dynamic yeah. is so spot on. I love it. <laughs> this this also leans into that. And yeah. I feel like this is a safe question. Yeah. But I am curious figuring out the right first moment for Lee to smile because oh, it really yeah. ingrained itself in my brain. Because like, do you remember the specific moment? I think so. It it's the part it's the part where she's talking to her her mother her mom and, on the phone. Yeah. And yeah. her her mom her mom asks her like 
like, are you doing, like, with work, like, yeah. nasty yeah. stuff? Yes, yeah. I'm like, yeah. that's so interesting. Yeah, because I don't think we saw, we don't see her smile before No, that, right? she's, very, yeah. she's very intense. She's, she's not a big <laughs> smiler. Um, yeah, that was, uh, that was Oz. He was like, I feel like we should, it would be so nice to see, like, this slight softness or, like, a vulnerability with the relationship with her mom. And he was like, let's just try it. And it was like, it felt when we were doing it, I was like, oh, yeah, this this feels right to kind of bring this, like, because also at the end of the day, I mean, she's my mother. I love, you're, you're always, no matter the turmoil, like, it's your mother at the end of the day. And so being able to kind of show this, even though it's a very tricky relationship, that there is this love for her. It's such a powerful yeah. choice. Yeah. Spot, like, yeah. spot on in yeah. that respect. Because yeah. clear, clearly it's I remembered stuck, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it yeah. definitely stuck yeah. with me. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use this a similar question yes. to wrap up long legs <laughs> yeah. and lean into they follow. So again, we've already established you are a horror queen. You are an icon in this genre. You have done many a horror movie. Can you can you tell me something about long legs that like wound up adding a new layer to the horror filmmaking experience for you? Like something that convinced you like th- like there's still more for me to learn from in this genre. I think. And especially now, having seen Long Legs, I think back on It Follows and seeing this sort of like when the horror genre, having a movie that sort of pushes the needle forward and is doing something different, something like classic, but but doing something different and unique and like telling a story a different way. And I think that Long Legs is doing that, sort of pushing the needle in a way that's like so interesting and beautiful and fucked up and like all these things that I think um, is what I was like, oh, I, th- uh, I need to do this. Yeah. Your, yeah. your, your radar in that <laughs> yeah. respect is spot on. I love, yeah. I love the, like it's classic, but there's also so many unique yeah. things that yeah. I, like I've truly yeah. never seen a horror movie do before. Yep. I've seen yep. a lot yep. of horror movies. Yep. yep, I agree. I agree. So a similar question about They Follow because you know, in this industry, we love seeing the continuation yeah, of our of favorite franchises. We love seeing a sequel to a film we love so much. But you don't just want to rinse, wash, repeat. You want to you want to do of something course. new. Are you able to tease what it is about they follow that will give us more of what we love, but also take the concept to a new level? I'm like, ah, oh, there's mm-hmm. again very little I can say. <laughs> yes, um, I had a feeling. Yeah, <laughs> but I, uh, I mean, as you know, the the first film is not because of I'm not taking any credit in this. David is brilliant. I mean, he is brilliant. The the whole movie as I mean, it just it it transformed at that point. It was like, yeah, changing the game in the genre. And he wouldn't ever make a sequel if he didn't think it was going to um top like he's very specific uh turns down so many like he just knows what he wants to do and what he wants to make and um yeah I mean you know at first I'm like oh sequel where are we where are we gonna go here and I read it and it's just so fucking good it's so good I'm so excited I think like where you'll meet Jay at this point is like so maybe not what's expected, but it's so cool. Um, and it's just like, of course, as everyone says for sequels, it's just like it literally, though, is like just bigger and darker and more fucked up. And it's just like it's it reading. It was like the craziest thing ever. Uh-huh. Yeah. You're so you're saying all the yeah, right you know yeah, key yeah. phrases key yeah, words yeah. here. Here's the one. Here's one of my questions yeah. that you might yeah. not be able to answer. Yeah. If you can't, I respect <laughs> that. But with the with the other characters from the original, mm-hmm. are any of them back in the picture alongside her? Like, I don't think I can probably. Fair. Yeah, I, don't, fair. I don't think I probably can. I'm like I don't. I knew the second. Yeah, I had to I ask like, that, but I knew. Over. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll find out <laughs> probably okay. soon enough. Yeah. I'll, ta- I'll yeah, take that. Yeah. I'll take that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a question that you hopefully can answer, but actually yeah. before I even ask yeah. this, just so I phrase it properly, yeah. you haven't started shooting. No, that. no, no, no. 
So having read the script, because like another thing is we like we want these stories to evolve and give viewers something new and you continue a franchise. A hundred percent. But we also want them to like challenge you and be fulfilling yeah. for you as an actor. So what is something about the script that you think will help you as an actor who's continuing to evolve her craft? Oh, it's yeah. I mean, I am so excited for this role. Like it's been, yeah. A long time since I've been like this excited to like delve into yeah it's there's there's a lot there to play with and um, I just I think it's gonna be incredibly challenging for sure uh, but yeah, so fulfilling and working with David I'm just like I yeah I can't wait I can't wait yeah. I can <laughs> clearly I can't yeah. wait I'm like bursting at the yeah. seams right now I will move to our very last ladies' night question. Yes. Oh, it is okay. the question I've gotten in the habit of ending on all the oh, time. can't wait. Makes people uncomfortable, oh, but no. I don't care because I think it's an important <laughs> idea to remind everybody of, no matter what industry you're in for that matter. In Hollywood, people give each other awards. Super cool. I do think we should continue doing that. Nobody in this business tells themselves good job nearly enough. That's fair. I want to know something you did in Long Legs that you know you'll be able to look back on and say to yourself, mm. I am so proud of what I did there. Oh, I I feel like it's a role that I've n- never really done before and it's painful to watch myself for sure it's as a lot of actors it's like oh god but I think yeah watching certain scenes and I think especially the scene with Cage was just like huh oh, like good job that was intense that was a really intense day and like I think that it paid off and I'm proud of myself off yeah. Big time. <laughs> big time. Yeah. I'm going to say huge congratulations on everything you've accomplished that I yeah. already love so much. Long legs, which I'm going to obsess over and watch a million times, yes. and everything coming your way in the future. Thank you so much. Congratulations to everybody out there. Long legs in theaters July 12th. Please go see it because I want it to do well, but <laughs> also because I need to talk about it with people, like yep. all the specific spoiler yep. stuff. Yep. My God, this movie's so full, and I'm Thank already you. obsessed with Thank it. Thank you so Congratulations. much. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs>